Kia ora and welcome to this update on the Australia defence market on the 7th of May 2020. I'm Graham Soloway, New Zealand Trade and Enterprise Program Lead for Defence, which is a key area of focus for the team in Australia. I'm pleased to have with me from his home on the south coast of New South Wales, Kim Gillis, our new Beachhead Advisor for Defence Industries. Now, Kim is well known in Australian defence circles, having had a career in government and industry encompassing customers and border protection, senior roles at uh, Australian shipbuilder Austal, and as CEO of Boeing Defence Australia. And Kim was also the Deputy Secretary of CASG, and that's the Defence Material Purchasing and Statement Arm of the Australian Defence Force. Kia ora, Kim. Welcome to New Role with NZTE and, and working with our customers. Welcome. Kia ora. Um, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to uh, talk today. What is CASG and how does defence procurement uh, work in Australia? CASG is a capability acquisition and sustainment group. Effectively, it's the acquirer and sustainer for the Defence Force in Australia. All of the major projects all the way down to uh, fairly simple procurements of boots and equipment all the way up through to submarines and joint strike fighters. And then sustaining the entirety of that fleet. In my time, I had a $200 billion forward budget uh, in acquisition and an annual sustainment budget around the 6 to $7 billion. So a, a reasonably big portfolio with about 6,000 staff. First, you've got to assess, do you have the right product that's actually going to meet the needs of the, of the customer? The Defence Force is very, very particular about what it wants. And if you're not delivering what they want, they will find someone else to deliver it. The way that the rules are drafted uh, is that an Australian industry versus a New Zealand industry should be treated the same in any acquisition. New Zealand companies are offering equipment and sustainment activities into the Australian market, and they should be doing that on an equal footing to Australian companies. That is an agreement between the governments and something we should be able to execute on. What impact has, had, has COVID-19 had on the defence sector in Australia? There is a real focus from government and from the Defence Department on resolving the issues that are confronting them, which are related to COVID-19. I don't think that the existing contracts are at all affected. The Defence Department has an active role in Australia in supporting the local health departments. So there are specific requirements that industry is being asked to do to support the, the COVID-19 response. Are you seeing the Australian government looking to stimulate um, defence projects as a form of, of growth out of the COVID environment that we're in? Probably not yet. Um, I know that the defence white paper and the $200 billion expenditure um, predominantly around some of the large platforms were very much about designing and improving the the engineering capability, the long-term production capability in country. Probably for the next 12 months or until we have a vaccine or an alternate strategy that's actually going to open up global markets, I think there is an opportunity for Australasian companies and specifically New Zealand companies to, to have a really good look at what did traditionally Australia procure outside Australia and do they have that supply chain or do they have that capacity to meet that? What are those supply chains? What are those specific capabilities that you might have in New Zealand that you might be able to inject? Do you see an opportunity there for firms to pivot? Selectively. If they can identify a shortage, need, opportunity, what are those things that you can deliver now? It might be anything in the defence market that they can't get hold of because of the international flying restrictions, travel restrictions. You've just got to make sure that you can deliver. Uh, there's no point offering something that has to be delivered in a short period of time and not coming up with the goods. If there are shortages that the Defence Force has, New Zealand companies have a capacity to meet them, definitely. Poke your nose in and make sure that you're putting your product forward and putting it forward very forcefully, but be able to deliver. Getting equipment out of Italy at the moment is just almost impossible because they've shut down. Even when those European companies start opening up, there's a backlog issue there. So we have to become far more reliant 
on that Australasian supply chain than just purely the international supply chain. And it won't work in all areas, but there are opportunities I see as a result of this change where smart companies can inject themselves in to ensure that in some of those critical areas that the capability is supported to ensure that if this happens again, next time we are better prepared. Only a matter of five or six weeks in, we're talking about opening up a, a joint bubble between Australia and New Zealand, it sends a resilience message that in a world environment with these types of risks and these types of events occurring, that the strength of that relationship is going to be critical to our success in rebuilding our economies. But also, I think it's something that both countries and both industries can start getting a much closer relationship in and making sure that the supply chains are secure, especially when global trade is this restricted. And I say that the next two or three years is an opportunity for smart companies to, to make those types of moves. Defence is a long game. If you're not willing to invest the three to five year range to actually be successful, you'll find it hard because most of, the, most of the things actually take that long. What would be your key pieces of advice for New Zealand companies that are looking to supply into the Australian defence sector? What should they be doing right now? Make sure that you do your market assessment, that you go out there and have a look at what the customer is actually wanting, what they actually require. While we've got these travel restrictions, it's really hard for companies to get in, but yes, you can still do virtual meetings. But I believe that we're going to open up our travel between Australia and New Zealand much faster than anywhere else in the world. I think there's an opportunity that the only international defence companies that are going to get into Australia are going to be New Zealanders potentially for six or 12 months. Let's make an opportunity out of it. Let's see how with a market where there are no American or European business development guys and ladies coming into the country to actually try to sell things for a six or 12 month time. Uh, let's see what New Zealand companies can do and how the, the door might be more open than it's traditionally ever been. There are Army, Navy, Air Force and Joint Capability Managers at a range of different levels. They're the appropriate people to talk to first to say, I have a piece of equipment or I have a capability. How does this fit into your requirements? Traditionally, that was very hard to do, but under the new structure, Army capability, Navy capability, Air Force capability are very open and able to have very general discussions before tenders are actually released. Thanks, Kim. Thank you very much for those insights. Thank you. Looking forward to uh, working with a range of New Zealand companies.